Well, hello, everyone, and welcome back to Monday Night Live at Suburban Home Center, Wyoming, Arizona. This is Sandy. And there is just like all kinds of fun people in here tonight. And um, so let me just go through and say hi to a few people. Todd, hello. Doug is here, and we are going to talk about Doug in just a little bit. Doris loves America. Papford Homestead, so that is Charlie and Brandy. Angie is here. A seed on good soil, and that is Cecily. And Stormy Young won. They got their chicken coop. They got to do it. The chicks got to get big enough. It's a very exciting time. <laughs> I tell you, it's, seriously, it's, it, it's exciting. I love it when you got those little baby chicks and pretty soon all that puff starts to have feathers. It is fabulous. And look, he's here. The Ann girl is here. And Dale Homestead, hello. And you can see that certain people have a little S after them. 99 cents to be a member. Um, Ann is. Doug is. Oh, look here. Rebecca is here from Touched by Yarn. Rebecca just sent us hats that she made. And on my last live, I showed those. They are fabulous. And Teresa is here. She's also a member. Craig is here. What's up? <laughs> and Shelly is here. And Shelly is also a member. And I always tell Shelly and Doug that I wish I was their neighbor. And Shelly was telling me in a comment, you can't be my neighbor because I was making stuff in the kitchen. <laughs> and Captain Jack Scrapper is here. Hello, how are you? Thanks for stopping in tonight. And everybody's just saying hi to everybody. Lynette is here. Hello from Michigan. <coughs> Lynette is from Michigan. Excuse me. And um, <laughs> Doug says, I must be in trouble. Doug already said hi to you. And <laughs> he is just so funny. Well, and good. Rebecca got her card. I sent her a thank you note because those hats are just fabulous. And I'm just going through everybody. I don't want to miss anybody. Just, oh, Debbie's here. <laughs> she says, hi, Sandy. Through the wonders of technology, I'm sitting at the Dairy Queen, waiting for my order and watching you. Woohoo! That is a good benefit of technology. Joe's over here. He's hiding in the back. Yeah, I want to tell him a story. What? Yeah, I want to tell him a story. I don't know about that. <laughs> he says he wants to tell a story, but... I don't know about that. Come on, baby. Because you just never know what Joe might be saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, Stormy Young has become a member. 99 cents a month. Thank you so much for that. Okay, Joe. Okay, 30 seconds here. <laughs> the other day, I had a lot on my plate, you know, so I, I told Sandy, I'm going to have to make a list. Yeah, <laughs> She knows what's coming. <laughs> She says, just a minute, I'll go get you a piece of paper, okay? <laughs> so this is what she brings me. She says, this is more than enough <laughs> to cover your list. Now, it was true. <laughs> <laughs> she thinks she's so clever. <laughs> I am clever. <laughs> you say it's still blank. <laughs> no more list. <laughs> Sometimes he says, I don't have anything on my list. I did it all. I said, I can give you stuff on your list. <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't really want stuff on his list from me. But. <laughs> no, my stuff is a lot funner. Oh, his stuff is more fun. Oh. Anyway, that's my story of the week. <laughs> I got things to do now. Oh, yeah. He's got a list. He's got things to do. <laughs> Bye. Oh, I was a little worried on what he was going to say. <laughs> and Cheryl is in. Hello, Cheryl. And Carol is here saying hi to everybody. Fun, fun, fun. Okay, so everybody's saying hi to everybody. Ah, 
Captain Jack Scrapper is in here to learn what to plant because our topic is what to plant in August. That's right. Now, one thing before we get much farther into talking about what everybody is going to plant in August. Doug says, Joe, did you give Sandy the present you showed us? He gave it to me, but I gave it back to him. He thinks that's just so funny. <laughs> and Debbie says, your huge tomato you sent me is growing like crazy. So are the squash, but not sure if there's enough time for the tomatoes to finish. It's really amazing what they can do in August in the first part of September, though. I wouldn't give up. And Wendy is here. Hello, Wendy. How are you? Let me finish scrolling down. And i got to take a drink. My throat's a little dry. got this for my birthday. It's so fun. Of course, yes, radishes is one of those things we're going to talk about. Hey, Todd. Todd was in earlier and he must have popped back in. So, Todd, how are you? Busy as a bee. It's a, it's a busy time. The summertime, if you're a gardener at all, it is a busy time, which is pretty fun. Okay, now, topic of conversation today. Now, I want to scroll up and there's Doug. Now, Doug at His Way Homestead. Doug has been my friend for a long, long time on YouTube. You know, we connected early when we both started doing videos. And I know that he has been a member for 21 months. I think he's my longest member. Woohoo, him and Steph. Anyway, Doug is so close. I wrote it down. Right now, he has 4,958 subscribers. So that means he only needs 42 subscribers to hit 5,000. So if you have not subscribed to His Way Homestead, and Doug or Shelly, um, if you would put a link to His Way Homestead. It'll pop up. Nightbot will pop him up. But if he would do that, um, I would so, so, so like it if um, you would go over to His Way Homestead. Subscribe to him because you will love him just like I love him. And, oh, Doug says Nightbot just did it. Awesome. And let's make him over 5,000. You know, when Shelly was trying to get over a certain amount, we were talking about it. It was just bam, bam, bam. Now, I know some of you are already subscribers to His Way Homestead. But if you are not, um, I would like you to do it. Captain Jack Scrapper says, I have my notebook ready and green ink because he wants to know about plants. And there is His Way Homestead. So you can just click that or copy it, and you can go right over there. And Karen is here. Hello, hello, hello. She says she is already a subscriber. And Wendy says, I met him, and they are good people. That is so, so true. I tell you, Nightbot is a crazy thing. I have all my members listed. And how it decides who to show, when to show it, I don't have any idea. Because look at there. There's his way home set again. <laughs> okay. So let's talk about what seeds we're going to grow in August. Now, if you didn't see my video, this is a photo album. Because one day I said to myself, it would be so nice if I had just a book of seeds that I could put under my arm, I could go and take it right out to the garden and no worries. So I'm using this photo album because a photo album has little sections in there 
and you can just slide your seeds in. Now I have this little packet here. Now on it says, plant in the end of August. Now that seems very weird because I am in Wyoming. But as a lot of you know, I go to Arizona in the wintertime. So are there things that I want to start or just at least get it sprouted? And so I have like giant tender crisp celery. These ones are all giant ones. Purple haze carrot. It's a giant. Gorda melon. Watermelon. Because in Arizona, I can grow watermelon way easier than I can grow in Wyoming. Because the season is longer that we're down there. Because we're like when we, we're half the year here, half the year there. But when we get back, there's snow in May. And sometimes there's snow in September. That is tough to grow watermelons unless you're growing them in the greenhouse. Now, this is a giant pink banana squash. Is that fun or what? And the one I'm most excited about is Tropic Giant Cabbage. Now, it wants me to plant it six weeks before it goes in the ground. And so that's why I'm planting them towards the end of August. Because in October, we will go down to Arizona. And I'm just so excited. Um, Anne says that she has never um, started salary from seeds. It's not really too hard, Anne. But start it early. I mean, way earlier than that, what they tell you. And your zone is warmer than Wyoming. So you, you could probably set yours out end of April, maybe first part of May. If you put a wall of water around it, for sure, at the end of April. Um, we are in Yuma in the wintertime. I know, Doug, doesn't that sound interesting? Giant pink banana squash. It's supposed to be really long, kind of pinkish flesh. And so I'm totally excited about it. And Lynette is in. Hello, how are you? Lynette, we were just talking about his way homestead that he's 42 people away from 5,000 subscribers. And so we want him to hit 5,000. Ah, oh, in Tucson. I was in Tucson in May. I like Tucson. Have you ever eaten at that restaurant called The Feast? It is spectacular food. Every time I go to Tucson, that's where I'm eating. And they change the menu every month. Is that crazy or what? Okay, so what can we grow in August? Now, I'm a zone 4B. And when you decide what to grow in August, that really depends on your zone, too. Now, I'm, I'm probably one of the colder ones of all the people that are in here. And it's interesting. Oh, LG Homestead is here. Hello. How are you? I hope you're having a good week. Ooh, I'd like some of those seeds, if you would ask Shelly. Shelly, could I have a couple seeds? <laughs> I always like to try squashes that I haven't tried before. So what can I grow? And if I can grow it, basically anybody can grow it. Because I have enough time, so you should have enough time. Radishes. Easy enough to grow. Um. I can grow very short growing carrots. If I start them in the first part of August, I can do it, you know, ones that are 60 days. Because what I will do if it's going to get cold in September, you know, because sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, I'll just cover it with some straw. And then when it warms up, I'll take the straw off. So that gives me some extra leeway of time. Hi, Shawnee. How are you? And Karen says, I just learned that there's a squash called a mashed potato squash. I really want to try it. It's supposed to taste like mashed potatoes. How fun is that? If you find a place to buy it, let me know. And I'll order some and see what I can do. <laughs> so what Todd wants to know, what you, can you plant in August? Radishes. fast growing carrots. Lettuce, of course. Now, depending on where you live, if you're, say you're a seven or an eight zone, 
You could literally plant brassicas right now. And even if they didn't um, grow to maturity right now, they'll, your winters are um, warm enough that they'll just kind of go into dormancy in the wintertime. And then when it, you know, it, it starts to warm up February, March, they will start to grow again. So it's interesting that certain things will do that. Oh, looky here. Doug is at 4961. So you guys have, some of you have gone over and become subscribers. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Angie says that she saw the mashed potato squash on TikTok. Oh, see, there's a whole bunch of us that would like to try it. That is awesome. We have to be, be careful as it is hot here in August. Now, that is true. In the southern states, it can be hot and you think, oh, I can't start my brassicas, can't plant my brassicas right now. But there are tricks to do. Like maybe you're going to um, shade them somehow. One of the things I really like to shade plants with when it gets really hot is um, bamboo fencing. Now, sometimes I'll put it over top like that. Sometimes I will just make a cage around it. And it still lets a, enough sun in there to let them grow. But it cools it because of the shade all the way around. And it just filters that really hot sun. And that bamboo can absorb that heat. And it doesn't transfer it. It just absorbs because the bamboo is hollow in the inside. And then the heat rises and it goes up through that hollow section. And I have done that many times with tomatoes. Another thing you can use is screening because that will filter that sun. And that way you can plant them in August. And a lot of times, depending on where you live in the United States, you actually don't have frost until in November. And so that gives you a lot of times to grow cool weather crops. So any brassica, cabbage, broccoli, kale, do you know that radishes are brassicas? There's a lot of things that are brassicas. Kohlrabi's you might be able to grow. And Doug is saying that um, August is usually the hottest month, but July has been a scorcher this year. And so many people across the country had said that they'll show their temperatures on their videos. And it is crazy. I feel so bad for Texas. So bad for Arizona and New Mexico. Hot, hot, hot. Ah. And Hendrickson Family Farm is in. Doug says, I planted bacon seeds. I have to water them a lot in the summer. <laughs> Doug, you are so funny. <laughs> now, for you guys that like to grow fall crops, what are you putting in there? Now, another thing that I do a lot of times in August is... I plant my cover crops because it has enough time. And, but what it does is like my raised bed will just look like this weed patch with my regular vegetables in there because the cover crops are growing because I don't want that soil bare. Because in Wyoming, we just have so much wind. And if you leave your soil bare, a lot of it will blow away. Well, look who's here. Good evening, everybody. What is brassicas? Brassicas are cabbages, broccolis, cauliflowers, um, radishes, kale. Um, they're just in a group. They're called cool weather vegetables. And they're very hardy. They have a lot of the same structure, you know, same kind of stem, same kind of roots. Um, the radishes are still a brassica, but they, they're, they're different. And Wendy says that in Oklahoma, I am planting a lot of fall crops from green beans, beets to cucumbers because her season is so much longer. So depending on where you live, that makes a difference on what you're going to grow in August. Like, could I try growing some green beans? Yes, but usually the middle of September, we have snow. Or we'll have frost and then it'll warm up again. So I have to know what, how much stuff I can cover and how much stuff I can't. So I have to just choose 
on what I'm going to plant and what I'm not going to plant. Um, LG says, colder than normal winter. Mm, that's interesting. <laughs> Teresa wants to know about bacon seeds, Doug. That's right. Where does Doug get his bacon seeds from? Does he buy them at the store? Does he order them online? We just don't know. And Tony's in here. Tony is over in the pond, over the pond. And it is, gosh, it's probably three o'clock in the morning. Tony, how are you? <laughs> um, Teresa says, zone five, I'm going to plant more garlic. And I don't usually plant my garlic until September. Though you, I could easily dig up what I wanted, break the cloves apart, and put it right back into the ground. But usually I let them dry for a little while, and then I put them back into the ground. And um, I do plan on pulling some of them up this week and probably the rest of them next week. And so we'll see how good of garlic crop I get. Some years it is just fabulous. And other years, they're, you know, just depend on the weather. Um, they're not as big as other times. Barb from Con Barb's Country Home is in. Hello, hello. And everybody's saying hi. That is, you know, one of my favorite things about doing a live is everybody gets to talk to everybody. <laughs> Forgot Doug's bacon seeds. <laughs> Where are their freeze dried? Where are their freeze dried Skittles? Doug makes freeze freeze dried Skittles. They are so delicious. They sent me a bag one time, and my grandkids were over, here, and it was just like crazy talk. Um, yes, bok choy is in the brassica family, and that it is a perfect plant to to grow. Now, the farther south you go the more regular vegetable crops you can have, because sometimes when it's really hot, um, you're not really growing a lot of vegetables. You're using way too much water. It's stressful on the plant. So unless you have some kind of cover for them, it's really difficult to grow. So a lot of times when they have blazing hot times in the summertime, they wait till August before they're planting their fall crops. And you, a lot of people can grow all kinds of stuff at that time. It's still really warm. Um, the nights are warm. The soil is already warm, so it grows so much faster. It's like the reason why we don't grow plant corn um, in the ground, like the seeds actually in the ground till the end of May, first part of June, is because our soil is too cold. And if your soil is too cold, the plant, the seeds don't sprout and once they sprout, they don't grow as much because the soil is too cold. Now, other places in the country never have that problem. And <laughs> Doug has, here's my short video on bacon seeds and how you have to water them. <laughs> you got to love Doug. Seriously, you have to love Doug. Oh, and Terry is here. Hey, Terry, how are you? Um. Cecily says, I love the artwork hanging behind you, especially the yellow house. These are some of my paintings. Now, some of them, like this one up here, the landscape, the house, and the little teapot. Um, a friend of mine that I do private art lessons with, she finds them. I don't know who the artist is, where she finds them. She'll just say, can you teach me how to paint this? And, of course, we always change some of it. And she's not selling them. She just wants to learn the technique of it. And so um, that's where they are. And this is a vineyard that I painted. Flowers, you know. Right now, we're working on an old coffee pot and a, a metal cup that coffee pot is metal and the cup is metal and it's white with grays and it's worn and that's the project we're working on right now at her house in fact I go there again tomorrow morning and so that's always fun and um I think she's a much better painter than she gives herself credit for 
She always tells me that she can't do it unless I'm there helping her. But I really think that she has much more talent than what she thinks. But I love going over there. I love showing her different techniques because she's always finding different paintings. And she'll say, how do they do this? And so I'll have to study it and I'll practice some at home. And it's like, oh, yeah, we can do that. And so that's always fun. And Doug says, Shelly makes the freeze-dried Skittles, and they are so good. I mean, seriously good. If you've never tried freeze-dried Skittles, they're way better than regular Skittles. And I like it. <laughs> um, Stormy says, I thought about doing a YouTube channel, but don't know what I could teach anyone except for how <laughs> to make plants die. You could talk about the baby chicks putting together your new chicken coop, life as the chicks, chickens grow, when they start laying eggs, things you have to do, things that, you know, people are always looking for information. And I think it's, I think it's something you should think about. And, you know, I think it's, I think it's good. Um, Teresa says, I have that problem with too cold soil with okra every year. Now, because okra likes warm and it doesn't want the soil cold. When you plant that, you, may, you need to make sure that soil is already warm. Now, things you could do. So, Teresa, you could lay black plastic weeks before and the black plastic, actually any plastic, you know, but even a black plastic garbage bag. Lay it down, hook it with bricks or something to hold it down in the area that you want to grow your okra. And the thermal heat from the sun will warm that soil up. Other things you could do is walls of water. You could set those down um, and just for weeks, just let the soil warm up there. Don't forget to water the soil sometimes because you don't want it to completely dry out. You want it to be moist and hold that heat in there. And so it's just something you could do. And then the okra would be much happier because the soil would be warm and it's like, oh, we're home. We can grow. <laughs> okra is a hard thing in Wyoming. And sometimes it works really good if we have a good summer and it is fabulous. Oh, Lynette is leaving us. Have a good night. Thanks for stopping by. And They are beautiful. I uh, see Cecily's talking. I'm not sure what you guys are talking about. Um, so let me scroll down a little teeny bit further. Then while I'm doing that, oh, got a card in the mail today. That's right. Card in the mail. We'll talk more about seeds in a second. It's a thank you card from the Vineyard Chicks. And I'm one of their members. But look at these. They got new stickers. Aren't they so cute? I love the Vineyard Chicks. They are just amazing. And then, this is from Teresa. <laughs> Teresa's in here. <laughs> all I did was cut the top. I haven't looked in it at all. So, hmm, two cards. Thank you card, it says. I'm always so excited when I go to the post office box and I, find I have something in there. Birthday card, regular cards, letter, anything. Oh, look at this, a corgi. You know, I have a corgi, Reagan. Says thank you. And she just says thank you so, so very much for the earrings, they are beautiful. Yay. And I'm not going to read the rest of it because I never know how much I can read online. You know, some people don't like me reading any of it online. And so it's always hard to tell. Um, how are the hens in this heat? Well, you know, it gets lots of morning sun. And then there's a lot of trees right by where the ch our chickens are. And it basically goes into shade. And so they're either in the shade of the trees or the shade of the raspberries. Um, and we always make sure that they have a, 
They have a bowl of water. They have their hanging thing of water. They have a water thing inside. And um, then I try to give them things like um, watermelon and cabbage, things that has a lot of um, moisture in it. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm opening the card. <laughs> and there is happy birthday stuff all in there. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> birthday presents. Are these fun or what? Little tiny presents. <laughs> Teresa. <laughs> you can't have a party without confetti. So here is some to get the party started. Woohoo! Thank you for the beautiful card. And I love all the confetti. That is awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, and Charmaine is here. Hey, hey, hey. Um, I did have a nice birthday. And Joe took me to the movies. Um, and we saw, it was called Where the Crawdads Sing. It's based on a book. Um, Wendy, my birthday was on the 29th. And if you haven't seen that movie or if you haven't read that book, it is really good. And I, I was telling one of my sons, one of our boys, that um, um, I was going to it and he said he loved the book. These are awesome, Teresa. Look at it. It's corn. So I am assuming I put the corn in here and put it in the microwave. But there is a note to tell me. Oh my gosh, I'm wrong. She says, I so liked your video on putting socks on the ears of corn to keep the animals from eating it. I had never heard of that before and found it an ingenious idea. It inspired me to have some fun with the idea. And so I made you earmuffs. <laughs> He said, that is so awesome. <laughs> you could even sit them out after slipping them over the bottles of water. That is an idea too. I hope they bring you a smile and always lift your spirit when you see them. And then she has a little bit more stuff. He said, thank you. That is an ingenious idea. I'm going to have to do a whole video on this. Now, I don't have any corn growing here, but I grow it down in Arizona. Not that I couldn't grow it here. I just don't have really the space for it. I'm taking these to Arizona. I love them. But I'm really wondering, and Teresa, tell me what you think about this. Could I put an ear of corn in here and put it in the microwave? You know, like you can put... Ears of corn in um, your grocery bag. Could I put an ear of corn in here and put it in the microwave? And would it cook faster because it would hold the heat in? That's what I wonder. I'm going to try it too. But I love them. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's so fun. So, got four earmuffs. <laughs> Tony. <laughs> Happy birthday. Use money for alcohol. <laughs> you are so awesome. <sighs> I have the best friends ever, I tell you. <laughs> I mean, I seriously I have a, all, all my cards over here behind my computer. I seriously believe I got more cards this year than I have ever gotten in my entire life. So thank you, everybody. Thank you. And she's laughing. <laughs> that is so funny. Yep. See? Party. I love confetti. My one friend that used to live next door, Katie, she had a friend from college. And she was always sending her things. But she never knew 
what to expect. And she'd be, she, she got this card from her one day. She's in the car. Um, and she's opening the card in the car and it explodes with glitter everywhere. <laughs> now I love glitter, <laughs> but that would be a tough thing in your car because glitter goes everywhere, you know, and it was everywhere in her car. And then the more you try to get it up, it goes more places. So, <laughs> okay. That's right. It is a glitter bomb. <laughs> but she was always doing that. And she'd wait a while. Katie would forget. And she'd open something. And there's glitter going everywhere. <laughs> I found it very funny. But I'm not sure I would think it was so funny when I was cleaning it up. <laughs> so we're back to seeds. My seed book. Which is a photo album. You could use a lot of things. I mean, I've brought out baskets with seeds in it. I've brought boxes out with seeds so that it's right there. But the nice thing about a photo album is that they have lines and you can write stuff. Now, my grandmother, she lived on a farm in Nebraska. She always saved her seeds. And she'd save them in little baby food jars that people would give her, right? Oh, and Brenda's here. Hey, Brenda, how are you? And so she'd have tomato seeds and cucumber seeds and squash seeds and whatever seeds that she saved from the year before. But what she did was she would put tape, masking tape, um, and she would write on there and she'd tell it, say what kind of tomato it was. And then she would write cool, wet spring or very hot summer. So if the farmer's almanac said that the coming summer was like that. That's how she picked what seeds she was going to use. And I just think it's a fabulous idea. And so in here, I can write things like didn't like to grow in that area, soil too dry, soil need amendments to it, things like that. And so when I go to plant the next year, I can look at that and say, oh, yeah. Now, Angie uses... Um, baseball card holders with three inch zipper binder. See, it's perfect because then you can carry it right where you're going. It all stays in one spot and you can just thumb through it. Like I have all my flowers first and then I have herbs and then I have brassicas and lettuces and corn and tomatoes and squashes, Swiss chard, things like that but I have them together. So when I'm out there, maybe I want to try three different types of carrots in that section in my garden. It's all right there. And I haven't finished filling this up, but I'll have everything ready to go to Arizona. And so I just have to grab this and put it in the truck. It's just one of those things that works well. Now, when you're, oh, Wendy says, you can get a zip zipper binder cheap right now because it's school supplies. That's true. I was in the store today and I said to Joe, look at all this school supplies. And so it's a perfect time because they always have such great sales beforehand. And you won't lose your seeds. That's right. You just don't lose your seeds because they're right there. And, and I thought, you know, if I stuff it too full with seeds, I could always run some packing tape along there, you know, and it's just, it's great. It's fabulous. And the other Teresa is in here. Hello, young lady. How are ya? Such good friends, I tell ya. <laughs> but other things when you're planting in August, if for some reason, because weather can be crazy, if it says that it's going to be cooler. Now, plants in the summertime never want the nights below 50 degrees. In fact, most of them would like it to be 60, 65, 70 degrees at night. But if your weatherman is saying, you know, we just might have 
some cold tonight and you want those things that you're planting in August to be successful, you need to cover them somehow. You know, row covers, sheets, blankets, buckets, whatever you think it will take just to keep that a little bit warmer. And don't do it at eight, nine o'clock at night because you're going, oh my gosh, I forgot. You're better off doing it a little earlier when the soil is still warm. And that way, when you cover it, it just really holds that heat in there. Because when it gets to be September, um, it's a little bit tougher because there are going to be much more nights that are going to be below 70 degrees. Here in Wyoming, there'll be lots of nights that are going to be below 60 and 55 degrees. And so even though that's not going to freeze your plants, you really want um, to keep them warm, not stressed. Oh, Teresa got her card. Awesome. <laughs> and um, I eat, Teresa says she always learns so much here, but there are such good comments on the side. Everybody's sharing, you know, tricks, tips that they do to make it so they're successful when they're planting, when you're planting in August. Because what you don't want is your cucumbers are done or your different things are done. You've pulled your corn, you've pulled your garlic. What are you gonna do with that soil? Now, if you don't wanna plant something for your fall, plant your cover crops. Um, I buy cover crops in the big 50 pound bag from a company in Nebraska. And mine has, I think I have five or six different types of seeds. Now the whole idea of my cover crops are they're gonna grow into what, until it gets really cold and freezes. None of the stuff I have, uh, mine are all annual, but I'm not gonna pull those plants out and so it's going to hold that soil all winter long. And in fact, sometimes when it gets springtime again, all of a sudden some of those seeds that hadn't sprouted are coming up again. And it just becomes a green manure. And I'll, you, I can either just leave them, I can pull them and pull and drop or chop and drop. A lot of times I'll chop and drop instead of pulling the plant out because if you leave the roots in there, they will biodegrade and they're great food for um, microorganisms. It's food for um, mycelium. And so it just becomes this great thing in your soil. And I know a lot of people just want to clean their whole garden out. But a lot of times it's much better for you. After it's frozen, you know, you've got your frost, the plants are dead. Just leave them. Now, does it look as, in, as attractive? No. But a lot of times insects, bugs, bees, if that plant has a hollow stem, will literally lay eggs in there that will overwinter in those plants and hatch in the springtime. Look at that. Cheryl says 58 degrees a couple times in July. That is totally crazy. Um, Teresa says, don't forget the garlic in a couple of months. I actually can pull some of my garlic. I'm going to pull at the, towards the end of the week. Some of it I'll wait for another week. And it'll really just depend on how big it is right now when I pull some of it out. If it looks like it's regular full size, I'll probably pull all of it. And I like to hang my garlic on my clothesline. Now, if it's going to rain or the... Um, sprinklers are going to go. I either have to cover it or um, take it down while it's raining because the idea is for it to dry some. Um, and Teresa wants to know if they're self-seeding. If, if I plant them early enough, some of them will seed and it becomes self-seeding. Um, but I usually don't plant them until in August. And if we have a, a really hard freeze in September, it's just the plants. But everything goes back into the soil, and so it adds to it. Um, that is true. 
Um, beans fix nitrogen from the air, rejuvenating the soil. Green fertilizer. That's right. And there's um, there's a lot of legumes that do that. And it's interesting if you pull one of the the whole bean plants out and you see these little nodules on the roots, that's where it's fixing the nitrogen. Um, it's just really interesting what soil can do. And I find it, I just find it great. Um, Anne says, oh gosh, I will have to work on leaving the plants in. They really like to, we really like to clear it out and cover it with leaves. Well, see, you are covering it so nothing goes away, but maybe consider instead of pulling the plants out, if it just drives you crazy, cut them off at the base and leave the roots in there for all winter to biodegrade and feed the, micro the microbes and earthworms and insects and bugs. All the They need food in the wintertime. And so maybe consider that. Then you can still put your leaves, you can drop all the plants, put the leaves on top of them and just let them biodegrade all winter. Just an idea. And Judy says, so do peas. That's true. There's a lot of things that pull things out of the air, out of the soil, and help the soil. And so it's really interesting, the whole life of a garden. I just got done reading a book on soils. I mean, it, would, it was just like mind-boggling. It was written by, he was actually a master gardener, but a scientist too. And the whole aspect, he just really went in depth. And I took it back to the library already. It was called Soil, I have, to, I have to look it up. But it was really interesting. I mean, some things I had to read and reread and the whole concepts of ions and caton, cat, Catins. That's not how you say that, right? That's not right. Um, and positive is the negatives and um, how things break down and how um, one thing that I found extremely interesting. Oh, Teresa says that she um, always makes sure to rotate her vegetables too. So not to use, use the same spot for the same vegetables. Now that's a whole nother topic. Now, there are some studies over in England and they are growing like cabbages in the same spot for five years. I mean, they're adding compost, but they're, they're, they're still doing the cabbages. Um, and then they have a bed right next to it that they rotate. So the cabbages go in different spots and then they're weighing um, the yield and all that stuff. And, First year, about the same. Second year, about the same. Third year, more productive in the same spot. And then fourth year, it goes down a little bit. And third year, or fifth year, it goes down a little bit. Totally interesting. And so this whole idea that we always have to move our vegetables, um, they're really see, they're seeing some stuff. Now, if your vegetables had any kind of fungus, disease, you better make sure you're moving them. But there was really, it was really interesting how brassicas could really benefit for staying in the same spot for a few years. Um, what about if you plant it in buckets? Will that work too? Um, yes. Now, when I plant in buckets, you know, I usually have a mixture, depending on what I'm growing in there. Sometimes it's garden soil and compost. Sometimes it is, um, you know, like a raised bed mix, um, things like that. Well, what am I going to do after the first year? Am I going to still use that soil? Some people just dump it out and they're buying new stuff every year. Well, I would not do that. So what I did do is I always want to add a third, a fourth to a third of new compost or new potting mix or raised bed mixture into that. And it's enough to rejuvenate it. And I can use the same stuff again. So like when I'm planting it, my flower pots, I'm using potting soil and I'll just add 
a fourth to a third of the volume. I'll mix that with compost, put it back into it, and it works perfectly fine. Anne says, we just cut our green snap beans and left the roots. Excellent. But can I go ahead and plant some other things in where those roots? Yes, just plant it right next to it, you know, because where you cut it off, you'll probably be able to see a little bit of stem. Just plant it right next to it. And any of those things, spinach, dill, Swiss chard, any brassicas, because you'll have plenty of time for your brassicas to grow where you live. And so, yes, of course. Those whole mushroom kits can be dug into the soil in shady areas of the garden. Now, this week, you know, a few weeks ago, I started growing mushrooms in toilet paper rolls and in a book. And I went through the whole process and, you know, I had to put it in the dark, then it went in the fridge, then it came out. And the book hasn't started growing yet. One of the toilet papers has grown, oh, they're probably this tall. And the other one's just starting to grow. And so I'm going to do a video this week. And so now Tony is correct that you could dig it in the soil in a shady area of your garden because almost all of those mushroom kits, you know, most of the time people grow it, the mushrooms come out and they think it's done. Well, there is plenty of mycelium in there to grow again. So a lot of times what people will do is um, they won't miss it again. Once they're done doing that first flush of mushrooms, um, they'll wait two to three weeks and then you can start spraying it again and it'll grow again. Or you could plant it outside in the shady area. It's just really crazy and fun what you can do with mushrooms. Now, I would like, um, I would like to be able to grow some mushrooms in oak logs. I think it is um, possible here, though they tell me that, you know, with our weather, it's a little iffy, but I think I could bring those logs into the garage in the winter time. Now it gets cold in there, but a lot of times I've stored potatoes in there and they've been okay. And then I could bring them back out in the springtime. So I'm looking for some big oak logs that I can try it. Judy wants to know, is it safe to use slug bait among vegetables? Um, Judy, I would read this, the side. I mean, I've never used slug bait. Um, I have used beer before. Um, I've gone out at night and picked up slugs. When we first got here, when we first moved here, there was no slugs, but there was no worms either. And then all of a sudden I had slugs one year. But what I found was that I was buying some plants from greenhouses and I pulled them up and there's slugs underneath in there. And I think that's where they came from. Well, now we have, we have a myriad of garter snakes and garter snakes will eat slugs. And it is rare that I ever see a slug anymore. But I did make the trays with the beer and the, all the different things that people say. But it, um, I think I would really read what it says with your slug bait. I would assume it's probably safe because a company is saying that, you know, it's slug bait and most of the time that's around vegetables. But I would certainly read it and look up some of those chemicals that are in that package before I put them out there. Cheryl says that worm castings did wonders for my pots. Oh my gosh, worm castings is fabulous. Now, if you can only afford one bag of worm castings, my suggestion is you make worm casting tea. And um, you can use like a nylon, pour some of the worm castings in there, tie it up, hook it in, and put it in a five-gallon bucket of water and let it, the sun steep it. And so that you're going to get more bang for your buck. And then you can use that as a fertilizer. Plus the worm castings, you can put them around plants too. Um, Angie's saying that um, salt works. That's true because it does a chemical reaction. And so does copper. When a slug tries to go over copper, it's 
does a chemical reaction and it, it's, they don't like it. <laughs> um, some people will use diatomaceous earth when they have slugs. Um, some people will put eggshells around plants because the slugs won't go over the eggshells. So there's a lot of things that you can try. Um, thanks. I was planning on adding more soil for next year. Should I wait until spring to add the soil? Yes. And the reason why you want to wait till the spring, early spring, is that um, if you have too much snow or rain, um, it's really draining that stuff out of your buckets and you're losing a lot of the good stuff. And so, and Tony says, sticks in the bottom of your raised bed will extend the life of your soil as it biodegrades. That's true. When we made our raised beds, um, we had branches and leaves and um, plant material. And we just piled it in there because our raised beds are pretty tall. And if we just dumped soil in there, that would just like be so much. And why not just let it biodegrade? And every spring it goes down some because it's biodegrading, it's compacting some, and then we just add more to it. Um, worm castings do work well. They work fabulously. Um, they can be a little spendy. Um, does it matter, Tony, what kind of tree sticks are from? We've used a lot of different kinds. Tony, have you found anything that you found you didn't like? Now, some will biodegrade faster than other ones. The harder the wood is, the longer it's going to take to do it. Um, Hendrickson's family farm is going to bed. <laughs> Nothing worse than alcoholic slugs. <laughs> um, I suggested beer to my husband and he didn't believe me. Yeah, they, they're attracted. They're attracted. If you don't want to buy beer, you could put yeast in some water and they would be attracted to that. Um, some people say you can put apple cider vinegar in water and they're attracted to that. So I think there's a lot of things that you can try and see what works best in your area. My husband wouldn't want to <laughs> share the beer, but sometimes there's a little bit left in there. It gets stale. They'll like it. Um, Doug says rabbit poop is amazing. That is so true. I am always making rabbit manure tea and those plants, man, they love that. Rabbit droppings, worm castings, they can go true right next to your plant. It's not going to burn them like chicken manure will because it's too hot, but not rabbits and not worm castings. And it is a great benefit. Oh, Nisi is here. Nisi, how are you? I'm way later. I usually have half an hour. We're talking about gardening. And so there's just so many things. <laughs> um, I could see that happening because green willows, you can just stick in the ground and they'll root themselves and they'll start to grow. So I could see that. Um, it might take a little bit longer if they were buried deep, you know, like in a three foot raised bed, but I think they probably would try to grow because they are crazy growers. Do tomatoes work okay in raised beds? I have grown tomatoes lots of times in raised beds. Um, I think you, you have to be careful. Now, my raised beds are really pretty tall, which are probably too tall for Wyoming because they say if you have lots of wind, your raised bed should be shorter um, just because it dries out faster. So you have to be willing to water a lot. Where on the East Coast, where it's very humid, um, the raised beds are very tall usually just because it will hold so much moisture and it will drain. So it just really depends on what you want to do. Um, I, I like to add compost, homemade compost if you have it. If you don't, um, buy some organic compost. Um, worm castings, I like to put in raised beds. I like to there's what they call raised bed soil. Um, I have found that it works really good the first year, but if you don't add stuff to renew that because it leaches out, um, it doesn't grow as well the second year. So 
But if you're adding compost around the base of your tomatoes, um, I think it will really work. Um, Wendy wants to know, can you make your own worm castings? Yes, I have a worm hotel in my yard and I put in vegetable scraps and newspaper and I keep it, make sure it doesn't dry out too much. It's in the shade so it doesn't get very hot and it's in the shade all day long. It's not ever in the direct sun. And those worms just go through and they just eat and they go to the different layers. And I can, um, when they're done with one layer, I can use that whole bit and start again and the worms will move around. Yeah, you can make your own. Now, a lot of people use red wigglers in there. Red wigglers will not survive our winters because it's too cold in our winters. And so what I do is I just use earthworms and then I just dump them into the so into the garden in the fall time when I um, go to Arizona because it is too cold here. Now I probably could bring them in the garage, but there's nobody here to make sure that there's still moisture. And so I just dump them in the soil where if I had red wigglers, they are much more spendy than me just digging up some earthworms and they munch around. They, they were totally fine. And Macy has been a member for 11 months. That is awesome. Now, one last thing before I go. If you've come in here and you are not a subscriber of His Way Homestead, he is so close to 5,000 subscribers. So I would ask you either now or if you're watching later to go over to His Way Homestead, subscribe so that Doug can hit 5,000 this week. He only needs 30 some more subscribers. So I hope you guys do that. And oh, interesting. Cheryl says Japanese beetles are horrible this year. It We never have Japanese beetles here, but they can be so destructive. I mean, you're worried for a minute when you said rabbit manure tea. I just put, I usually use an old um, pillowcase, throw a bunch of um, rabbit manure in there, tie it up, put it in um, a five gallon bucket full of water, put a lid on it. Or if I don't want to put a lid on it, I put a cloth or, or cheesecloth over it because I don't want flies going in there. And I just leave it for a few days. If it is hot, 80s, 90s, it's just a few days. And I got rabbit manure tea. If it's cooler, it takes me about a week. And then it is totally strong. So then I pour some of it in my watering can, add water, and I put it all over my plants. And they just grow and grow. Wendy says it's the pests have been so bad this year. Oh, that is too bad. We... I honestly really haven't had too much pests um, other than those European caterpillars that ate almost every leaf I had on my gooseberries. They don't do anything with the berries. And so other than it looks really weird, it looks kind of skeletoned, and then it's got all these gooseberries all over the place. <laughs> but that's really been my problem this year. And they only last for a certain amount of time, and then they are gone but they are not native to the United States. They came from Europe. And she says, she's got to go. I got to go too. Our tomato plants are very successful and our bed is three rows high with concrete bricks. Awesome. That is awesome. Um, just make sure that next year you're adding stuff on top of the soil, layers of compost on top of the soil, just because they will deplete a lot of the nutrients. Um, but I am going to let you do go. And thank you so much for stopping in. Oh, Donna's here. Hey, Donna, how are you? Um, I am way longer, a half hour longer than I usually am. But everyone, make sure that you go over to His Way Homestead. Here is the link. If you are not a subscriber, please subscribe to him. And I just appreciate you guys. The lights on my hydroponics have gone out, so it must be time to go. And everybody have a great night, and I will see you next time. If you have more questions about gardening, send me an email, and we can talk about this stuff. Okay, everybody? Thanks.